Hi guys, this is Paul from emailors.co.uk. Uh, welcome to part one uh, of the Academy 172 F22A build. Um, you've seen the inbox review on the other video, so this is the start of our video build of it, uh, part one. Um, hopefully it won't be uh, a long series of videos because it doesn't look as much a complex a plane to build as ME109 was, so hopefully I should be able to wrap this up in say four half hour parts. Um, like I said in the uh, the video review, um, I hope to primarily use Mr. Hobby Paint in this. Uh, it's a first for me using them, um, so we'll see what they paint, uh, brush paint and spray like as well. Um, so let's crack on with the build. Right, I've cut out the appropriate parts from uh, the different sprues. Um, I think we've got about ten different parts, some quite small, quite fiddly. Um, I cut them off, tidied them up, so we've used sand and stick on them, uh, the knife, etc. Um, so we'll quickly put together the uh, ejector seat, uh, and then we'll move across to the spray booth. We will spray up the cockpit tub itself and the seat as well, give them a prime and what have you. So I'll zoom us in a little bit because it is quite fiddly to see. We've been 172. It is rather small. Excuse my nail varnish as well. I've been spraying a Mustang this morning. Um, so, using our instructions, which are next to me, um, we will need that, 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 and that. So we put those parts out of the way so we don't lose them. Not quite sure, but the instrument panel itself is in the clear parts. Uh, quite unusual that. I'm not sure why, because uh, it's just resprayed um, number two, which I assume is going to be black. Yeah, flat black. So, unusual, not sure why, but hey, that's the way it calls it out. So like I say, these have already been tidied up, so I'm literally going to use the reference, and we'll start putting it together. So that's our right hand, left hand side as we look at the seat. So, this is the one for us now. So, it to bear with me, because I'm doing this on the fly as we go. So, it's that. Into there, like so. Gotcha. So let's go our glue. Again, using Tammy is extra thin. My preferred choice of glue. Uh, at some point, I hope to try the Mr. Hobby, uh, Mr. Cement, I think it is, because uh, again, I've heard very good things about it. But for now, I'll be using the Tammy. Because um, it's a nice, thin glue. It flows very well by capillary action, so. It really does get to what you want and glue it very fast. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. It's quite fiddly this little cockpit. Being in 172. So I literally with the extra thin glue, the beauty of it is where I've got a large well it's not large, but a large section to glue, you just literally touch. And as the glue is so thin, it just carries itself through and down. So again, it's very handy. There we go. So I see basically together. Needs a little bit of fine tuning just to get the four parts into position. That's essentially it. There's one small little bit somewhere on my desk. There it is. Uh, I'm judging by the look of it, and it's going to be colour number four, which I'm going to guess is yellow. Yeah, that's going to be the ejector seat pull. So, I'm just going to put that in. There's a little gap at the top there. If you imagine where the pilot's right shoulder was, there's a little gap. So, I'm just going to drop a little bit of extra thin in around both sides, in fact. Little squeeze together. So I'm happy where it is, which I am now. And I'm going to use a pair of tweezers for this bit because this part is absolutely minute. Just dropped. Yep, that's a tiny little part. There we go. So there we go, a little ejector seat pull. So, I'm going to put a little bit of 
a little bit of glue on that ready. And then it's just a little hole at the front of the seat. Like so, refer to instructions, yeah, everything's fine. A little bit more glue. Just a touch. And around. And job done. There's the ejector seat built. Not too demanding. As you say, not quite nicely detailed for 172. We put that to one side, let it all dry. Um, we'll leave off the instrument panel for now until I get that all sprayed up and decaled. So, just a cockpit tub now. Um, it's actually quite well detailed. I don't know if you can see into the sides, but there are various buttons and controls and what have you. So, it's now a sparse cockpit. Some very basic foot pedals at the bottom. Well, I assume the foot pedals could be foot rest for all I know. Um, so no problem at all there and just on this one we have a couple of parts to go at the back and a couple of what look like hand controls which are there and there so again the same as before I'm going to use the tweezers to pick these up because they're rather fiddly So, a little dab of glue on that part ready. Make sure it's orientated the right way. And then we'll pop it in its position just there. A little bit more glue. Again, the only real problem with the extra thin is don't just pull the bottle out and touch it on the surface of the glue because you do bring out quite a bit on the brush. Just to wipe it off and just use a small amount that's on there. So that's that one up. And then the other part is there. So this one just needs a little trim at the top first. So they are quite fiddly, quite small. But obviously they add to a bit more detail in the cockpit. Um, no pilot fig with this unfortunately. Um, just on a quick look, yeah I think I've got a pilot figure there I can use. Looks like 172. That's come from another kit. So I'm more than likely to add a pilot. To this as well. So again, opposite side to that joystick. Pop that in. And your tweezers just to manoeuvre. And another little dab of glue. That's that one done. And now one little part at the back. Like so. So again, just behind where the actual seat itself will sit is this little part. So a couple of dabs of glue. Check the orientation, which to me looks just like that. Pop it in. A bit more of an angle. There we go. Have a glue. Job done. So there we go. There's a couple more parts to add to our ejector seat, which I'll do in a bit. I'm just gonna let the main the main section of it dry because it is still quite um it's starting to set slowly now, but I don't want to muck up what I've already done. So there's a the basic cockpit and ejector seat done. I'll go those other two parts on once this dries and then we'll go to spray booth, give them a quick prime, 
and spray them in the uh, Mr. Hobby colours. Okay, so I've got a number of parts I've been painted up now uh, using the new Mr. Hobby paints. Um, uh, the footage of these being painted is actually in the Mr. Hobby paint review. So if you want to see these actually get painted, go and have a look at that. Uh, it's just basic painting really, there's nothing really that special to look at. But if you want to see it, go and have a look. It's on eModels playlists um, videos. So what we've done, we've got the left and right weapons bays we've been painted in Mr. Hobby flat white. Uh, the ejector seat instrument panel, flat black. Uh, the cockpit tub was sprayed in FS grey. Uh, and then I've literally just now uh, sprayed the back in flat black. So what's left to do now is I'm just going to very quickly uh, paint the outline around the instrument uh, buttons on the side of the cockpit. Uh, I'm going to brush paint them with Mr. Hobby Paint. Uh, a couple of you guys did ask what they brush paint like. Um, I have another project on the side. I've got a little Airfix 172 uh, Mustang on the go at a minute for a, a special interest group on a forum. So I painted near enough the entire cockpit bar the interior green colour in the Mr. Hobby paint. So the black, the khaki, uh, etc. were all done in the Mr. Hobby paint. Um, what I will say is they do brush paint very well. Um, for me the benchmark in brush paintable paints is Vallejo model colour. Um, these paint on just like Tamiya paints, uh, the Tamiya acrylics. Uh, the problem with Tamiya acrylics is once you paint over a part, if you go back a minute later and paint over it again, you'll tend to just drag the paint off and end up with a terrible mess. These paint exactly the same way, but when you go back over, it doesn't take the paint off. So they do paint on nice. The paint's a little bit thin um, compared to the likes of Vallejo, so it's not the thickest of paint in the world. Uh, and it doesn't cover as well as Vallejo model colour. So it's sort of an in-between of the Tamiya acrylics and the Vallejo uh, acrylics as well. So they are very usable. Uh, and like, as you see, if you look at the likes of the black on the, is it, I think it's the radio on the Mustang at the back. Um, that was a couple of coats, dry very well. Same for the khaki on the seat uh, and what have you. So they are very usable as a brush paint, uh, although I would say they do airbrush a lot better. So, hopefully that's answered that for you. So, if I zoom us out just a little bit. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is just refer to the instructions. You can see that step there. We're going to do these little black outlines. Uh, then I'm going to go off camera, apply the decals to the instrument panel, uh, the weapons bay, and then I'll bring us back and we'll do a little bit of weathering. Uh, it's only a simple carpet, so we won't be picking out any buttons or have because they're too small to be honest. So a simple wash just to bring out a bit of detail. Um, we'll get the instrument panel decaled up. We'll probably drop a little bit of um, clear in there to make them look glass-like as such. Um, so once the decal is done, we'll pop back and we'll get that done. So for now, Mr. Hobby flat black. Uh, it's number H12. A little bit of a shake. So, with them being a bit thinner than Vallejo, remember once you've loaded your brush, which I've got the wrong brush, so I'll just quickly swap that. Uh, once you've loaded your brush, make sure you wipe it off, because it's quite a thin paint, you'll end up flooding the surface, so just be aware of that when you're painting. I always just use a lid myself, because it does hold a nice bit of paint once it's been picked up on the brush. So I'll do this as best I can for me to see and you to see. So if we just refer to the instructions, make sure I don't paint the part that shouldn't be. So we just want them there. So like I say, why I'd say these are more airbrushable paints. They certainly can be used to brush paint. So it's just a case, like I say, be aware they are quite thin. So when you're doing parts, be aware that they may flood an area rather quick. Just be aware of that when you're painting. As I'm making a right mess of this, getting paint everywhere now. 
But I can take that off in a bit off camera so it's no problem. Like I said, the paint's on just like Tamiyo acrylics. Yet without the problem once you go back over them. I've taken the paint back off. So what I'll do, I'll paint this up. I've gone a little bit over there, you can see it on the side. And I'll just put a little bit of FS grey back over that once it's dry. One thing, thing I have noticed about these, they do take a while to dry. That's still quite tacky at the back. If that was um, Tommy paint, that'd be dry by now. So you may need to factor that into your model building just to allow a little bit longer drying time to make sure it is fully dry for handling. You just have to excuse me a minute as well, I've got one of my dogs in here with me and it's snowing away in the background. So if you can hear it, I do apologise. Tricky little copper to paint being so small. Also quite hard to be able to manipulate it for you to guys to see as well. So what I'll do is I'll let that fully dry and then I'll go back over the FS grey and just tidy up the corners a bit where I've gone over. Like I say it's quite hard to be able to paint this so you guys can see it as well. That's enough so I can see it as well. Somebody else also asked about the smell. They do smell a bit. They smell like the Mr. Surfacer. Um, they're not as strong. Um, so, not really a problem as such. Um, again, if you paint anything, any particles of anything, you should be in a well ventilated room. And if you're airbrushing, you should have a booth anyway. So, that's just part of the buyer, really. So, what I'll do, I'm going to let that dry. And then I'll give it a touch up with the FS Grey and tidy up those little bits where I've just gone over. Um, I'll get some decal and done off camera and then we'll come back once they're set and dry and what have you. And um, we'll use a bit of a wash to uh, weather up the weapons bay and also add a bit more interest to that cockpit as well. Okay, so I've now decaled up the um, side weapon bays. Um, if I just zoom in a little bit, you can have a little look. So there we go, all decaled up. As you can see, there's a couple of ejector pin marks in there, but they're no concern really. Um, I've also decaled up the instrument panel, you can see that. Uh, quite nice decals to be honest, but we're going to hopefully make those screens look a bit more glass like in a minute. Um, I've also um, sprayed up the main weapons bay in flat white and added the flat black uh, centre part as well. Um, so again we're going to weather those. So what we're going to use is, I'll keep it zoomed in a little bit actually, is a concrete wash. So uh, just a water based wash. Um, I'm going to use it just to accent around the uh, switches and what have you on the cockpit around the uh, control um, joystick and whatnot, um, just just to accent the the, uh, the buttons and what have you a little bit rather than individually paint them. It's too small to do that. Uh, we'll put a little bit of a wash on the ejector seat as well, bring out a little bit of detail. I've painted on the yellow ejector pull. Um, so, and then we'll also do the main weapon space. So what I've done quickly off camera is I've literally just very quickly put some of the wash on there, uh, just see what it looked like. I don't want it too dirty, they're a fairly new aircraft, um, so in my eyes they wouldn't be absolutely filthy, or I wouldn't think so, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, so I'm just going to go over grey wash rather than black dirt. Um, so, literally with the case this is a good shake of any wash. Um, a brush, make sure it's a brush that's not been used for anything, you know, 
um, cellulose based or anything like that, anything might react. And then it's a case of load the brush up and we're literally getting into all the the detail, all the um, gaps, panel lines, any protruding parts. And then once this is dry, it's literally wet a cloth, or in my case it'll be a cotton bud. And you can remove the wash from wherever you want it, leaving it in. So hopefully it'll leave it in where all the sections are in there. Give us a nice, subtle weathering effect. Same for this as well. So, I'm trying to do so you can see as well. Just literally brushing it. I'm not getting gallons of the stuff. I am wiping the brush off as I do it. And there's quite a nice bit of detail in here. There's wires and what have you, cables. So it'll look fairly nice once it's done. I have decided as well, uh, I'm going to use the clear weapons bay door so it'll be in a closed position but clear so you'll be able to see through um, into the weapons bays even though they are closed up. And luckily, like I said at the beginning of the review of the kit, uh, you do get two sets of all the glasswork. So there is a tinted one. I want to use the clear so I'll put the tinted on. Uh, lightly glued in place over a PVA um, while I spray it then I'll take those off and replace them with the clear ones at the end so it will be perfectly clear and properly masked at the same time so just make sure all the wash is everywhere you want it then this is left to one side to dry and then we can come back and remove it so this part now I'm going to need a little bit more of a detail brush I'll just find one in my drawer, that'll do so again make sure it hasn't been used for anything have a look so all I want to do now is literally the part I painted black and I did touch up, touch up the grey as well uh, I just want to get this in there and what that'll do it gives the effect once it's wiped off of showing where the buttons are if you can see that there so if I go out of shot it's just pretty difficult to do and keep you guys in as well so there we go, a little bit on top, doesn't matter because it comes off very very easily in fact I've got a cotton bud there, we'll just Whip that off, that's hidden by the seat anyway. So there we go. Don't know if you can see the wash, it's in there. Only a little bit, very subtle. So again, put that to one side to dry with these parts. Um, the seat, eject the seat. Again, what it'll do, it'll just highlight all the details. Like I said, it's only a 172 kit, so there's not a massive amount of detail in there, but of what little there is, we can try and show a little bit. Sorry, my hand caught that then. So this probably take 20, 30 minutes to dry. Like I say, because it's water-based, I believe it's clay-based. It's just a case of wetting up a cotton board or a piece of tissue and you can wipe it off where you don't want it. It's very, very handy. So there's those done. So they can all go to one side for now. Um, that's taken the brushes once they're wiped off. So what we'll do now is we've got our instrument display. So what I'm going to do I'm going to pop that down there. I'm going to zoom us right in to where we can see. There, yeah, I'm going to get a nice detailed brush. And all we're using here is exactly the same as what we were using on the ME109 as the um, clear coat for decaling. Johnson's uh, clear floor polish in a bottle. Um, so I'm going to whip the lid off. There we go, 
so I put that there. I'll try and do so you guys can see. I'm literally going to touch it in there and hopefully. get enough on the brush I can get it to pull the decals off you see that glistening there so hopefully once that dries it'll give the effect of being glass like just going to drop a little bit more in. There we go. You see those decals are now nice and glossy. So pop that to one side. And again, that can be left to dry. So we'll come back in a minute. Once these have all dried, and we'll remove that wash. And see what we've got. Okay, so all those parts are... 20 minutes to dry now, so I'm going to quickly remove some of the, um, the wash itself using cotton buds, just any normal cotton buds you get from the chemist or boots or what have you. So, as you can see, it hasn't all completely dried in there, um, it's still a little bit wet, but it's enough to do what I want. So, I'm just going to quickly put the old cotton bud in there and get all the, the wet out. Like I say, the idea where I want is to leave the wash in amongst the uh, panel lines and the detail parts. Just to give it that like, slightly soiled, weathered look. So I've, I've now wet the cotton buds, so I'm just going to Go in between everywhere and hopefully we'll leave a little bit of detail in there, which we have. So over the decals. So there we go. Not massively dirty, but just enough to make it look a little bit more interesting. And then I'll do the other one off camera in a little bit to save you guys sitting there watching me do both. So onto the, the main weapons bay, and as you can see, if I'm honest, I don't think that needs anything doing to it. It looks absolutely spot on. A little bit of excess around the edge I'll probably take off, but the detail is all nicely highlighted in there. Obviously there's not much detail in the side ones, um, but there is in there. So that's worked very well in there. Nice effect, just what I was looking for. So I'm just going to literally, you can see it along the edges there, take that off. Um, like I say, you just wet the bud. And it takes everything off very easily. On the black it's left a nice effect as well. Right, very well. Just the effect I was looking for. So there we go. Nice detail shown for all the cables wires now. Really do stand out very nice. So very happy with that. So that's that one done. Now the cockpit, uh, the tub where we did. I don't know if you can, the camera can pick that up or not. But you can see just nice like the effect where all the buttons are on the black sections. I don't remove any of that. I just literally want to just take the top of it off. So hopefully it'll leave us with a grey base and the black buttons showing through just nicely. So there we go. That's that one done as well. 
and now the seat. So again, not a massive amount of detail brought out, but just enough. I could dry brush it if I wanted, uh, what have you, but to be honest I'm not going to. So like I say, it just brings out a little bit more detail to what's already there. So, any wash will do, any of the Vallejo washes. Um, I'm using a clay based wash. Um, you can make washes out of pigments and what have you. Uh, oils, uh, anything you want, but I just find this the easiest method. Uh, after this, the Vallejo acrylic washes are probably easiest um, because you can wipe them off while they're still wet, or once they're dry, you can actually use Vallejo airbrush cleaner to take it off. But this is by far the easiest way of doing it. So that's now done there. If I pick up that instrument display, I'll look what that's looking like it. So we've got a glossy effect there now. Let me zoom in. We can get the camera to focus. There we go, you can see that glossy effect now, can't you? Just there. So like I said, they're nice decals, and obviously with the little dab of clear in there, they have a nice shine to them. Um, you can keep adding the clear, um, the floor polish to it, to make the effect more pronounced or another way of doing it is using um, micro scales crystal clear um, which is a glue PVA based glue I believe uh, you can actually put this in in like a dome effect so it really you know it can make a more pronounced screen but I'm quite happy with that it's just the effect I was looking for just nice and glossy um, so that's perfect for me so there we go, that's the light weather and all the weapons bays in the cockpit and what have you. Okay then guys, that's the end of part one of our Academy uh, 172-22A uh, build. Um, this is the stage we're at now. Uh, as you saw just before, we weathered up all the weapons bays. Um, they're now in position in the aircraft. Um, nice effect. Certainly works well. Nice and subtle, not too much. So very happy with that. Like I said, they're gonna have clear covers on, so once the plane's all uh, airbrushed and what have you, you'll be able to see into those weapon space to see the ordnance in there. So we're very happy with that. Um, cop it all together now. Uh, that turned out well. So the light grey wash around all the switches um, has brought a little bit of detail there. Um, the ejector seat again. Just that light grey wash adds a little bit of interest and detail to it, and the instrument panel is all in. And a little bit of gloss on the instrument decals themselves makes them look a bit more interesting again. So, spot on with that, very happy. Um, so, next time we'll be moving on to getting the fuse large halves together um, and a few other bits and bobs. So, for now, uh, it's Paul from eModels.co.uk. Um, have a look at your model's website, all your modelling needs to be found on there. Um, check out all the videos on YouTube and um, what have you. Like us on Facebook and I'll see you next time. So thanks for watching, take care, goodbye.